Welcome to another video of Controllers Tech. This is the third video in the series of MPU configuration, and today we will see the cache policies. Let's start with the cache itself. Cache is a technique of storing a copy of data into a very fast memory. Very fast means where the read and write can take place at very high speed. Cortex M7 processors uses the level 1 cache to increase the performance. There are two types of cache used in STM32, and they are instruction cache and data cache. Let's see some of the terms that we are going to use in this video. First one is cache hit and cache miss. If we are performing the right operation, the cache hit occurs if the address to be written is found in the cache memory. And if the address is not present in the cache, it's termed as cache miss. In case of the read operation, the cache hit occurs if the requested data is found in the cache. And if the data is not present in the cache, it's called cache miss. Another term that we are going to use is dirty bit. Dirty bit indicates whether the cache has been modified or not modified. Every cache block contains one dirty bit. Generally, whenever the master writes the data into the cache, it sets the dirty bit to indicate the modification. The data write from cache to memory is only done if the dirty bit is set. This way the writes to the memory are reduced. Now let's talk about the cache policies in Cortex M7 processors. Here we have four cache policies write through, write back, write allocate, and read allocate. Let's start with write through, as it is the simplest one. In the write through policy, the data is simultaneously updated in the cache and to the memory. Take a look at the flow diagram. We will keep the focus on the writing part. If there is cache hit, the data will be written to the cache and then to the memory. And if there is cache miss, then the data is directly written to the memory. Basically, no matter what, the data is written to the memory in a single instruction. This method is useful to handle the data coherency. But here we are performing more writes to the memory, and that defies the entire purpose of using cache. Next is the write back policy. Here, if there is cache hit, the master will write the data to the cache, and set the dirty bit. The data can be updated later in the memory. To be precise, the data will be written to the memory, only when the new data is about to be written in the cache. But if there is cache miss, that means, if the address to be written is not present in the cache, then it completely depends on the write allocate. In write allocate, the data is loaded from memory into cache, and then it's updated in the cache. And the dirty bit is set, so that the next cycle can get a cache hit, and the memory can be updated with new data. This is exactly how it's described in the diagram on the right. In case of the cache hit, the data is written to the cache, and the dirty bit is updated. In case of the miss, it will first locate some cache block, which can be used for this purpose. If the block is already dirty, the previous data will be written to its respective memory, and then it proceeds further with copying data from memory to this cache. But if the block is not dirty, it will copy the data from the memory to this cache. Then the data is updated in the cache, and the dirty bit is set, so that the next cycle will update the data to the memory. In STM32, the write back policy is mostly used with write allocate. Next is the read allocate. Every cacheable location in Cortex M7 is read allocate. In case of the cache miss, the cache lines are allocated for that particular data, so the next access to cache will be a hit. Here is the picture from ST's document about the policies used in STM32 Cortex M7. We have write through with no write allocate. In case of the hit, the data will be updated in the cache and the memory. But in case of miss, the data will be updated in the memory, and that memory block will not be copied into the cache, since this is no write allocate. Then there is write back with no write allocate. 
In case of the hit, the cache will be written, and the dirty bit will be set. The main memory is not updated instantly, that's how the write back works. In case of miss, the data will be updated in the memory, and that memory block will not be copied into the cache, since this is no write allocate. The last one is write back with write and read allocate. In case of the hit, the cache will be written, and the dirty bit will be set. The main memory can update later, that's how the write back works. In case of the miss, the memory block is updated, and the block is copied into the cache. This is because now we have both, read and write allocate. Here is the cache policies for the memory locations. Remember that every cacheable region is read allocate by default. Out of these locations, we are most interested in the SRAM region. If you remember the data coherency we talked about, where the CPU and DMA are not coherent in the cacheable region. This kind of issues takes place in the write back policy regions, and that is the SRAM. We will see some cases of data coherency issues now, and also how to solve these issues. I made this PDF by collecting some important things from one of the microchips document. The link to the original document is at the bottom of this PDF. Let's start with the first issue, when the DMA writes the data into the SRAM. Here DMA is copying data from the peripheral into the SRAM, and CPU is trying to copy this data from SRAM to some other location. Also note that the cache policy of SRAM is write back, with read and write allocate. DMA reads data from peripheral, and updates the data into the receive buffer in SRAM. But since we are using data cache, CPU will read the data from the cache, which hasn't been updated. So we have the data coherency issue here. To solve this, we can invalidate the cache. Let's see how. Again, DMA will read the data from the peripheral, and writes it in the receive buffer. As soon as DMA is finished, we will invalidate the cache for the receive buffer region. Now when CPU tries to access the cache, it's not available, so there will be a cache miss. Since the SRAM have read allocate policy, in case of the cache miss, a cache line will be allocated in the cache memory, and the receive buffer will be copied there. Now when the CPU tries to access this cache, it will have the same data as the receive buffer. This is how the coherency issue can be solved, using the cache invalidate. Here is the sample code, but this is as per the microchips protocol. But we will just focus on what's happening, instead of the functions they are using. This handler is called, when the DMA finished the transfer. We have transfer complete callback for that. Inside the handler, we have to invalidate the cache by address. The address is the address of the receive buffer, and the size is the transfer size, or the buffer size. This function is exactly the same across all Cortex M7 devices. In the main function, we can wait for the transfer to finish, and then copy the data using the CPU. The next issue is, when DMA reads the data from the SRAM. Here the CPU updates the data in the transmit buffer, but due to write back policy, the memory is not updated until the next write. Now when DMA read the cache, it will always read the old data, and not the latest one. I hope you remember when I mentioned this. That the data to the memory is written, when the new data is about to be written in the cache. Due to this, there is always coherency issue between the CPU write, and DMA read. We can solve this by cleaning the cache. CPU writes the data into the cache. Cache clean operation is performed to flush the cache into the SRAM. Now DMA read the data, which will be coherent with the CPU write. This is the sample program. First, data is being copied into the transmit buffer. Then we will perform clean cache by address. 
and finally enable the DMA transfer. This way the DMA can read the latest data from the transmit buffer, and the coherency issue can be solved. So we saw, we can use cache invalidate, and cache clean to solve the data coherency issues. We can also just make the region non-cacheable through the MPU configuration, and it will work just fine. I will show this entire coherency issue in the next video, where we will see some practical usage of MPU. Here is the link to the source document. You can read it for more detailed explanation. This is it for this video. You can download the files from the link in the description. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.